New study time, and today we're talking about protein. I know, super shocker coming from me. The cool thing about this new study, though, is that it potentially turns something we long believed about protein into a protein myth. Let's check it out. It is generally believed that the best way to maximize muscle growth is to distribute our protein intake into smaller portions throughout the day. That rationale primarily originated from research showing two things about muscle protein synthesis, the process that drives muscle growth. One is that synthesis rates are elevated from protein ingestion but quickly tapers off. And two, in upper limit two protein synthesis exists and any excess protein ingested above this limit will be oxidized and wasted. Not good. So to to maximize protein synthesis, this rationale dictates that we should eat smaller portions of protein of about 15 to 30 grams and distribute them throughout the day to keep protein synthesis rates elevated. And this has been the go-to advice for a while now. But all that is about to change if the findings of this new study is true. In this study, researchers measured the effects of consuming a single serving of either 0, 0.25 or 100 grams of milk protein following a bout of resistance exercise. And what they found was that, for the entire 12-hour duration of the trial, consuming 100 grams of protein led to by far the highest peak and longest rates of muscle protein synthesis. On top of that, protein net balance was significantly higher, which suggests that an upper limit to the amount of protein your body can utilize does not exist exist or is much higher than we believe. Oxidation rates were also similar between 25 and 100 grams, which contradicts the whole wasting protein if you eat too much concept. In other words, based on this new data, in terms of muscle protein synthesis, getting most if not all of your protein from one meal can be completely fine. In fact, the researchers also noted that with consuming 800 grams of protein, certain metabolic responses were still elevated after the 12-hour assessment period, which might mean that it's a effects are higher still than even what this study showed, which itself is already so vastly different from previous studies. Now at this point, some of you are probably wondering, okay, but we do have those past studies showing different outcomes, so what makes this new study any better than others? Well, in short, the researchers in this study produced perhaps the most comprehensive and robust data set that we've ever seen for this topic. And they did so by presenting a new and improved version of intrinsically labeled protein paired with a quadruple stable isotope amino acid infusion. If you have no idea what that means, that's completely okay. In short, it means that their methods to measure protein synthesis is one of, if not the best out there. And not only that, they also collected way more samples than most other studies. 18 total samples over a 12-hour period compared to only the handful of samples in other studies over a smaller 4-6 to six hour period. More samples mean more accuracy in the data. So overall, this study is pretty darn solid. Of course, more research would always be great, but if we were to believe in this robust set of data, then I am tempted to say that the idea of a protein ceiling or the need for protein distribution are now indeed protein myths. Well, not entirely just yet, mainly because the subjects in this study were recreationally active young male adults, which means we cannot generalize the findings to all other populations. We also know that more advanced individuals can be more sensitive to protein ingestion, which can lead to different outcomes. But it wouldn't surprise me if future studies on these populations still follow similar lines, but we'll have to wait and see. Another thing is that these are mechanistic findings that don't always translate to actual muscle growth. For for that, we only have limited data, mostly on fasting studies, that do show getting most of your protein in one meal doesn't affect muscle growth much, but we definitely need more studies to say for sure. Still, a positive mechanistic outcome is a good place to start. Now finally, what is the main takeaway from all of this? In the end of the day, the main thing we know for a while now is that the most important thing is to make sure you're getting enough overall protein, period. Now, whether you get that from 1, 2, 5, or 10 meals per day doesn't seem to matter all that much, at least according to this new study. But if you're a bit more advanced in your training, you might want to consider splitting your protein into smaller meals for now until more research is available, but you can probably cram more protein into one meal than you think you can. So everyone, I can't stress this enough, and as always, get your protein. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your protein-loving friends. Subscribe for more and let me know what you think in the comments. As always, thank you for watching and you already know, don't forget to get your protein.